and Postacoglu and Celtic are already preparing for big money departures leaving the club in terms of lining up their replacements for the January and the future summer transfer window. And that just sent me into overdrive. I've been digging through the Celtic team and having a look at, if I was a big club around Europe and I was looking at the squad objectively, who are the players that I think might actually leave Celtic in the next transfer window or maybe the next two? Who are the people who are likely to really step up in the Champions League and really put themselves into the shop window? And obviously we've got some international players that have the World Cup over November. So in the video today we'll be looking at the top candidates to leave the club in the January transfer window and think about where they could end up, who their potential replacements could be, as well as anything else in between. At any point in the video today, if you laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, then please do like, subscribe, share, retweet, all that good stuff guys. Stay out of trouble and let's get stuck into it. Now, we'll start off with the easy one, first of all. Josip Juranovic was hotly linked to some big transfers in the summer. Clubs like Chelsea, Manchester United, Atletico Madrid were all sniffing around him. Atletico Madrid have got their right back now. And as I look at Juranovic's start to the season, he's definitely continued on the vein of form that he left off last year. And with the international break that we're currently in, him playing for Croatia and with the World Cup coming up, Juranovic is firmly going to be in the shop window and he could be one of these guys that transfers directly into the Premier League. Juranovic isn't somebody who I would expect or anticipate is going to garner lots of attention across Europe because he is in his mid-20s. I very much see Juranovic being a potential transfer to a mid-upper, mid-level uh, Premier League team. The only kind of European giant outside of the English Premier League that I would think would have a spot for Juranovic in their squad is maybe Juventus, but I don't know where they're shopping for right-backs nowadays. That obviously swings the door wide open for Anthony Ralston to come through to be the number one right-back based on his form and his credentials at the club, which is fantastic. So who would we then replace Juranovic with? Would we go out and try and get another starter-level right-back to keep that competition with Ralston as hot as it's been? Or do we go and get a Bernabe Mark II, you know, another kind of project guy that can play under Ralston and can develop over the next 12 to 18 months. One of the things that makes Juranovic stand out for a right back is his ability to take set pieces and his calmness on the ball. In the elite professional clubs, especially ones at the top end of the Premier League and around the top leagues in Europe, those are attributes that they always seek out and hone in on because those are things that are very uncoachable and you need the minerals to be an elite player and Juranovic has more than shown that at this point. The second one is Celtic's very own Kevin Nash, uh, I mean Matt O'Reilly, who is maybe on the cards to be somebody's Kevin De Bruyne. You know, the way he's been playing for Celtic in that De Bruyne role, that false kind of target man forward attacking mid is, you know, he's been taken to that like a duck to water and he has been getting more and more admirers as the season has been on. Obviously, he made a big splash upon signing last January, but this being his full kind of start to a season, having a pre-season and working through, he's been producing some amazing performances for Celtic in spells this season. And although he's not been called up for the senior Denmark team at this point, he's still with the youth internationals. Lots of elite clubs around Europe actually target youth internationals as guys that they can bring into their club and further develop on. Now because of O'Reilly's size as well as his technical ability, his profile is very enticing to a lot of elite clubs in the top leagues around Europe. The sort of clubs I would imagine O'Reilly being linked to are clubs that have players in a similar mould already that aren't quite the finished article or maybe they're subject to transfer speculation and the number one club in Italy that pops up for that for me is Lazio. You know, they would very much, the, the size and the pace of O'Reilly's game would very much match in with that Sarri ball and if they were to lose Milinkovic Savic then it feels like O'Reilly is a really great doppelganger to come in and replace him in that exact role. Very similar build, very similar attributes. The way AC Milan have been targeting and buying players like Charles De Ketelier, Sandro Tonali amongst a few others, Matt O'Reilly would also really fall into the category of a player they could use and need as well as the sort of profile that they've been shopping for. After, miss after missing out on Renato Sanchez in the summer they still have a hole in their midfield and somebody like Matt O'Reilly could fill that no problem at all. There's a few teams in Spain as well that I like the look of as far as O'Reilly's prospects, teams like Sociedad, Sevilla, Betis, these kind of top teams that are missing maybe another piece in midfield to really help them level up. And in Germany, like, you know, we were all really surprised when Leverkusen came for Frimpong. I would not be surprised if Leverkusen were amongst the teams interested in Matt O'Reilly. They have a strong Danish contingent in their squad already, as well as teams like Borussia Dortmund and Red Bull Leipzig could very much use a midfielder like Matt O'Reilly in terms of enhancing their credentials to go really far in the Bundesliga as well as in Europe. Now, how do we replace Matt O'Reilly? Maybe the replacement's already in situ and somebody like Haksabanovic, maybe Turnbull just gets more minutes. But there's a lot of speculation coming out of Israel that we're after the next 
Machina is really a wonder kid coming out of there. Oscar Gluck. And by all accounts, if we sold O'Reilly from the intel that comes to me, this guy could slot in and, you know, fill that squad spot uh, relatively well for O'Reilly. And that feels very much like a Celtic transfer as well, you know. So there might be some legs in that and, you know, TBC will watch out for it. Could O'Reilly go back to England? Yes, I suppose he could. But I think with a lot of the players in the squad, their ambition to play with Celtic and play with Champions League and play European football, I don't think they're going to be as quick to run and play for Fulham and Southampton as players that we've sold in the past maybe have done before. And then outside of that, we've got a clutch of like maybe six players that there's some sort of speculation, some sort of question mark around their future. The first one is Liel Abada. Now he had Crystal Palace and a few other teams coming in for him in the summer and he's very young, very exciting, very dynamic and really I think anyone could be interested and spend a lot of money on Liel Abada. He could go to one of the biggest teams in Europe and kind of sit on their bench of course and do what he's been doing for Celtic but he'll be developing at a higher level, get paid way more money and he'll probably be playing in a better league as a result. You know, I don't think he's in any real rush to leave but the situation he finds himself in Celtic, if he's finding himself frustrated with that, he'd probably feel a little bit less frustrated in that situation, say, at, you know, a top three club around Europe somewhere. It gives him the room to develop, it gives him the breathing space to develop, he's got better players around him, he also has good players around him at Celtic also. But again, because of his age and the style of play that he offers, I could really see any number of teams been interested in Abada. The other thing as well is if you take off your kind of Celtic fan hat and you watch Celtic objectively, one of the most eye-catching players in the team is undoubtedly Greg Taylor. I did a video recently, it's featured on the Celts Are Here YouTube channel, and Greg Taylor is the N'Golo Kante of left-backs. You know, if you're a, a Premier League scout, if you're a, a scout from across Europe and you're coming to watch Celtic to see Jota, to see Hatate, to see O'Reilly, Juranovic, whatever... Greg Taylor will catch your eye. Greg Taylor is only like 24 years old. He's still kind of young as far as like left backs and defenders go, certainly. And honestly, like we get quite agnostic to Greg Taylor on the pitch because he's like, you know, not a flair player or anything like that. But I just know if you were coming to watch Celtic and you were from Germany, Spain, England or whatever, performances that he puts in, the actual graft as well as all the tackles that he completes, all the box entries he completes at both ends of the pitch, he shows up in midfield, he sho shows up in right back, left back, everywhere. That would 100% fill your notebook up. And I think Greg Taylor is one of these guys that he could go to like Atletico Madrid and it'd be really a big surprise. Of course, he could go to a Premier League club or something a bit more normal, if you like. But I think what Greg Taylor gives you, like I said earlier, that's uncoachable, that work ethic, that determination, on top of the technical attributes that he's shown and the coachability that he's shown under Postacoglu, I think he is a very prized asset that we have and we're not really aware of it. Maybe another one is Georges Giacomacchus. He is loving life at Celtic. He's, it feels like somebody who really is taken to the club, of course. Being a Greek international, he's idolised Samaras growing up and, you know, he knows a good bit about the club. He came here, he wanted number seven right away. He knew all about it. And, you know, a lot of people will think he's maybe frustrated that he's not nailed on number one for his goals to minute ratio that he's had at the club and all the rest of it. I think it's a bit of a non-runner. I don't really... I think Giacomacchus' negative points are what have led him to be signed by Celtic in the first place. You know, he was the top goal scorer in Holland. It's not as if we've unearthed him from the second division in Greece or from uh, an Argentinian youth academy or something. You know, he was the top goal scorer in Holland and nobody came in for him. He's came to us and he's been great. But again, I think the negatives that he has, I don't think Celtic have changed that. I don't think he's developed any of those negative points out of his match. So subsequently, I find it hard to believe that people would be running to Celtic to come and get Jack and Marcus off us. David Turnbull is a very interesting one because David Turnbull, if again, on the eye, if you look at his best periods at Celtic, he's got some eye for a pass. He can score wonder goals. He's got a good engine in attacking midfield. He does like to take lots of touches on the ball and that doesn't really suit Celtic too much these days, but it might suit another team much better for David Turnbull. And he's somebody who, like quite firmly, is not in the manager's plan A or plan A.1 or plan A.2. You know, he's the super sub guy. He's a relief player. He's a rotation relief for O'Reilly, Rio, these other guys. So if somebody came in for some decent money, like, and it helped fund Ange and the club, maybe sign somebody else that they wanted to bring in, I could definitely see Turnbull being one of the guys that leaves. Who could Turnbull go to? He could really go to anyone in like the championship, lower end Prem, lower end delight. We're seeing a lot of guys go to like the likes of Bologna and Verona. He could definitely end up in a situation like that because he has the talent to go into one of those types of teams and be like the main man. There's also some murmurings that maybe Edeguchi is going back to Japan with his injury just never seen, seeming to let up. Maybe we've got some sort of clause or some sort of exit on Edeguchi, so maybe that happens. And again, with James McCarthy still floating around the club and on top of all the acquisitions we've made in the summer, I don't know if Edeguchi leaving is something that the manager and the club would need to openly prepare for 
as of now. The same with the last guy I would throw into this video and mention is maybe Bane, you know, because he's firmly number three. I'm sure he'd be quite happy with his pay packet and the environment and the medals he gets at Celtic. But, you know, maybe somebody comes in for him, maybe he gets pushed out the door and maybe he goes to be a number one goalkeeper somewhere else. Do we need to replace that? I don't think so. We've got enough in the Youth Academy coming behind Seagrass that, you know, we can be probably quite well looked after for a 1-2-3 goalkeeper situation for the next few years. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Who do you think could be the next one to leave Celtic? Who do you think we could be bringing up as any replacements? What are the implications to the squad? Let me know all of that in the comment section down below. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Do not forget at any point in the video, if you did laugh or learn or something, I don't know, please do like and subscribe, share and retweet, all that good stuff, guys. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.